Hello, it is me, Beholder, and I just got done listening to Chestnut Brown Wood Cabin. And this came out recently, June 4th. Uh, it is 19 minutes, 47 seconds. A good, um, a nice bite-sized little album. Um, it is Comfy Synth. Uh, I guess the artist is out of Taipei, Taiwan. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. Um, they do have a band camp, of course. Um, and in their description it says, Comfy Synth, Plant Synth, Forest Synth, and Happy Synth. Uh, doesn't look like they have any other releases. This is it. And rumor has it, Neverwood Records might possibly be putting out a release from them. Like on cassette, I'm assuming. So, let's talk about this. And what an anomaly this is. Because this had a trailer on the Comfy Synth Archives um, YouTube. It's 40 seconds. Uh, I recommend checking out everything from this. Even the album. But the, the trailer that I'm playing right here right now is like really well made. It's like they didn't just make an album cover, like they made the 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 trailer at the same time with all like similar assets. Um and the color combo is very interesting. Like on the album cover, it's like an indigo and like a powdered pink salmon color, peachy color. Uh let's get Okay, um, okay, this thing started off real comfy. It encapsulated everything, um, that Comfy Synth stands for in the first track, and in the second track. Let me get the track listing up right here. Um, so it starts out with, uh, we, we brought board games, and I like that. It was really fun, really happy and upbeat. It's actually danceable. I did not dance to it, but when th just listening to it and studying it, I was like, this is something you can groove to, but it's also calming at the same time. And then uh, track two is uh, sort of the same thing. It seemed seamless going from track one to track two, it seems. Uh, I barely noticed it going into the second track. Um, I kind of really like put all the descriptors of like the first two tracks. It's everything comfy, upbeat, and it's really happy. Uh, yeah, and that mellows out, in my opinion, in track three. But when we get to like track four, Cold Wind in the Night, it, it got, the chords got very lush, and the mood, to me, changed to like everything like bittersweet, melancholy, some music to reflect to, reflect on the past. Same with intermission and to morning do it picked back up, but I realized the instrumentation seems to be consistent with the whole album. But I'm thinking like these chords aren't your like major, minor, and sus chords. Um these are very lush. I I can't identify them. I don't have an ear for that. Um, but I do know a handful of stuff about music theory. More than a handful, actually, but I heard some of these chords and the chord changes. And they were... it seemed like their goal was to get a mood. That's like a good, like, goal to have when writing music. Get the emotions down. And this person wasn't playing, like... It didn't sound like they were playing simple triads or anything. They were playing, like... I don't know, like... Um, like, beyond major and minor sevens, like, I think I heard a ma minor ninth in there. Maybe. I could be completely wrong. Um, but then I, you get, but after, like, fourth and fifth track, it goes back into, like, yeah, good mood. But the thing that really boggles my mind, and, um, I might sound culturally ignorant, but, but it's called Wood Cabin. And you look at the trailer, and you look at the the imagery and everything about it, I'm like, does Taipei, Taiwan have a cabin culture? Something about this seems very cabin culture. And I'm, 
I'm from New Hampshire, and um, when I think of cabins, I think of um, the north. I think of uh, northern parts of states and the northern parts of America. I think of Canada. I kind of think about Scandinavian cabin culture as well when I think of a cabin, like as I see it. So there's very a lot of parallels between cabin culture between in America, Canada, and Scandinavian cabin culture. And I'm like, I was like, this person has a lot of insight to this because I, even without the imagery of the album cover, um, because on the album cover you see a person looking out and they're wearing this hat, and I really think of Canada, it's a very Canadian styled hat, um, like lumberjack esque um, hat. Uh, that you might see from, like, the 1880s, I think. Um, I don't know, it just seemed very northern. And I'm like, how does... I don't know this person. It'd be cool to have a conversation with them, but... Taipei, Taiwan, like, do they... I'll look it up after this, but I wonder if... Like, they have any, like, any cabin-esque things that look like like anything in the album cover. Like, do they have scenery like this? Has this person traveled around and was like, got inspiration? What's their inspiration? How did they feel like doing this? I'm not saying everyone from there is like the same, but I don't know. I really, they really got the emotion down very well. So I recommend it. I recommend you either listen to it, going to their band camp, buying the digital album, two dollars or waiting for the Neverwood Records uh, cassette release if that's still happening but yes here's my take on you know the album by the way I didn't cover set track seven and eight but it went back I feel in my opinion went back to the happy-go-lucky uh, feelings of the comfy comfy synth sound but yeah that's my take on that album I recommend it you listen to it and supporting this artist in every way you can. Yeah, I'm Beholder. Peace out.